groups and organizations go too far. Right. They didn't try to repress them until they were actually uh, coherent, cogent, active groups struggling for change. They said we've got now to destroy these organizations and the leaders before they can actually preemptive start to strike. Preemptive strikes on democratic dissent. Right. Absolutely. Here's what a speaker at a FEMA conference in 1984 had to say. The proper response of a democratic government to terrorist violence is to crush it by force, exercised in a confident, measured, but thoroughly remorseless manner. And here's what Ronald Reagan said at a cable splicer conference. There are some people in this state who, if they could see this gathering right now, in my presence here, would decide their worst fears and convictions have been realized. I was planning a military takeover. <laughs> when Reagan was elected to the presidency, he installed Louis Giafrida as head of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Giafrida was an old cold warrior from Reagan's California days whose specialty was suppression of unrest and dissent. Louis Giafrida, who's a friend of Ed Meese from California, who likes to be called general, although he was never a general in any military organization. <laughs> he lobbies, he lectures, he goes on television, he's open, openly demanding legislation that would create, uh, uh, give him the power so that in time of national emergency, he can go in and declare martial law, and he advocates martial law. And he can, he can uh, lay a curfew on a town and put the National Guard on street corners and shoot people down in the streets. He is openly advocating this, uh, and, and he's not talking about doing it in Nicaragua or El Salvador. He's talking about doing it in our country. Martial law shifts control from civilians to the military completely. And without the necessity of a declaration, proclamation, or other form of public manifestation. Martial rule is limited only by the principle of necessary force. Louis Giuffrida. The structures then that flow out of the California period, and I, I think you're right to focus on the California period because it was a test lab for these new repressive technologies. And the same people went to Washington. Well, that's right. I mean, to. not only was it a paradigm, but it was an airplane flight. I mean, mm -hmm. these people flew into Washington when Reagan got elected, and they had set up this whole superstructure training programs, scenarios, a view of the world that was coherently based on this paranoid view of the, I call it the onion ring theory of domestic dissent, you know, because if you keep peeling away the layers of honest people, you find a commie inside, you know. Uh, that what happened is that they simply, now that they had the power to implement this on a national scale, they did so. Giafrida, North, and George Bush began to turn FEMA into an instrument of domestic anti-terrorism. You're dealing with a group of people in the Reagan administration who equated political dissent with treason and who cannot differentiate between emergency procedures, which I think everyone agrees are necessary, and suppressing political dissent. And with North and Poindexter and Casey, you had a group of people who saw Americans who disagree with them as the enemy. Alexander Coburn in, uh, in these times reports that uh, Gio Freda uh, attended um, the Army War College in 1970 and there wrote a paper advocating martial law in the case of a uh, uprising by black uh, militants along with roundup and transfer to assembly centers of relocation camps, at least 21 million American Negroes. This uh, paper was the basis for um, part of this uh, FEMA uh, program of the um, Reagan administration. Actually, FEMA had been set up by Carter. Yeah, Carter, Car Carter set it up just for, just for, you know, to take care of emergencies. Federal, or, right. Like hurricanes, 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 hurricanes or, floods, or, big, right. or yeah. big wars, something right. like this. But the Reaganites came in there and they, uh, they installed their... They California. brought Gio Freda from California. Yeah, right. With his him. world view. Right. Um, and so what did they do? What did FEMA set up? And now what is the status today? Well, what they set up was a series of structures for emergency management being localized outside of either the control of Congress or, in fact, the executive branch as a, as a unit. And they set up a, a parallel structure to manage society in the case of a crisis, which did not necessarily have to react to the input of Congress or necessarily react to the input of the president, but could have actually be 
a person not the president and not responding to Congress could then take over emergency management of a county, a city, a state, or in fact the whole country. Uh, fairly authoritarian worldview here operating and that the the means of doing this was achieved through a series of laws and executive orders that were passed uh, first proposed as a package and rejected as much to authoritarian and then simply slipped through one at a time in different bills the spotlight has a eight page special on the whole aspect of this and it, it says that what FEMA has done is to set up a parallel government and all these people are trained and people at the state and, and local levels are trained also and particularly the police organizations but people are trained so that when the president gives the word and of course all he has to do is give the word that he doesn't have to get con congressional approval if he says it's a national emergency then they have things set up so that they actually go in and they will run the various departments in the executive branch well, it'll be the, mil over. the military to do this. I have some information on this, Frank, that was published in, uh, in these times that somehow got hold of the uh, Department of Defense directive that was put out by this federal emergency uh, management agency, FEMA, that Oliver North helped to uh, write up. And the Pentagon document states, in those areas in which martial law has been proclaimed, military resources may be used for local law enforcement. Normally, a state of martial law will be proclaimed by the president. However, in the absence of such action by the president, a senior military commander may impose martial law in an area of his command where there has been a complete breakdown in the exercise of government functions by local civilian authorities. Military assumption of judicial law enforcement and administrative functions of local government will be based on necessity that is actual and present, and the performance of these functions will continue only as so long as the necessity of that extreme nature requires interim military intervention. If there was a nuclear war or if there was, say, an invasion of Central America and there was protest by the uh, people against that, a national emergency could be proclaimed and this FEMA Act would make it possible for the military to take over local government, to take over the courts, to take over the media, to set up concentration camps for all of the uh, protesters against uh, the current government uh, policy, and to in effect, ha in effect, have martial law in the country. Uh, this, uh, the author of this directive was Frank Carlucci, who is now. Uh, Reagan's uh, national uh, security advisor, and of course uh, Oliver North. Under any type of emergency, they were they would be able to arrange for the succession to office, and emergency organization of departments and agencies. In other words, they determine who would be running the the, the government. They would determine which governments, both uh, which people, both in and out of government, would have the uh, access to shelters <laughs> in the case of war. And so you got to have a buddy of FEMA if you want to live. <laughs> And uh, they would also coordinate the federal activities concerning uh, international civil emergency planning. Well, of course, under Reagan, this became much more sinister. And like you say, all of this uh, training which they had done in California. But there's another s sinister aspect of this, too. Sounds like the Soviet Union. The Department of Health and Human Services would set up mental health centers where citizens considered deranged or overly upset might be confined at the pleasure of the president. Uh, but what this is, is the spotlight goes on and say they're actually people who are trained so that they can move in and, and take over the uh, civilians as well as in using the military so they can actually have a complete coup. And that's the crisis we face mm -hmm. now. That's what, their response to these, they, to these turmoils of the people and the exactly. actions of the people. Exactly. And talking. what they are doing now is they are re experimenting with an abandonment of the elementary principles of the Constitution and replacing it by what? And let's face it, what are they replacing it by? They're replacing it by total totalitarian rule of the master up there. So it gives the president totalitarian powers to, to suspend the Constitution, Institution. to violate anyone's right whenever the president deems it's necessary. And what I discovered a lot of people yeah. throughout the country don't know mm -hmm. is that Reagan and Bush sent Oliver North to FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, mm -hmm. right. to do a memorandum as to what they should do 
in case of an emergency where a, where a lot of people in this country would not agree with their engaging in military activities like an invasion like an invasion or anywhere in the world right. and what do and he writes out and this was in as you know the Miami Herald right. during the Iran country hearings July 5th 1987 that the president should issue an order and in so many words and when I saw that for the first time I couldn't believe it suspending the Constitution of the United States suspending the Congress and replacing it with a military government suspending local and state legislatures suspending the courts and replacing with military tribunals and establishing detention camps throughout the country in which any person who didn't agree with this proclamation would be thrown in. Yeah. And what's even worse, it isn't just a decision of the president. They've delegated that, they have provisions to delegate this authority to local commanders and police authorities so exactly. that they can suspend civil liberties on a local basis whenever they want. On a local level, whenever they want to. I think one of the most key elements of it is uh, nationalizing, in essence, the National Guard and taking away control of the National Guard in a time of emergency from the governor, who is, of course, responding to an electorate, and placing the control directly into the military, who is not responding to either Congress or the president, but potentially a group of emergency managers in some little bunker someplace who take control of America in the name of Congress and the presidency until things are back under control. Now, there's scenarios Which is a little bit like Dr. Strangelove. Right, exactly, recall, where they, they, the military yeah. would take um, over. And in fact, their scenarios were nuclear war, that after a nuclear war, right. you would need some group to try to get production right. organized or save right. lives, et cetera, but... Well, that was under Carter, yeah. That was the, that was the yeah. theory yeah. of this, the real... This, this yeah. was the origin right. of this, right. but they also talked about national emergencies right. during the Central America era where there was right. talk about invasion of Nicaragua where there would be dissent, as yes. there was in Vietnam, and then the president could declare a national emergency, right. and they could round up dissidents That's and correct. literally put them in concentration camps right. that were named and localized. No, but well, this was understand. under the... This was, they already had this That's under the American, this nothing new. under the McCarran Act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was different in that it delegated this authority to come in and uh, uh, put people in concentration camps and uh, declare martial law to the local level. Yeah. I mean, the, the that, that was the key to the, how horrible it was, is that there was no one who was responding to an electorate had control over this decision making. It was a group of managers. You know, micromanagers and macro managers are going to move in and decide that your your city is too riotous. We're going to shut it down and take care of business, and we'll give it back to you when things are back under control. Well, that's you know pretty scary. It's a pretty scary construct. And they, um, any, any local police authority or army or, or military authority can say, "Hey, I don't want like uh, what's happening in this town." Okay. <laughs> There we are. Sign an order. Right. That's right. But they did have a national organization of FEMA. They had an office it was outside based of FEMA. Berryville, yeah. uh, Virginia, I think. That's correct. That had a little village that would manage things right. in case in of case a national of emergency. emergency. And we have no idea who these people were, what right. their plans were, um, they what their scenarios were. They certainly didn't appear in front of Congress and justify themselves because they couldn't. Right. Because if they ever was, did, people would go nuts. It was a top secret, right. uh, really <laughs> neo-fascist, authoritarian military. What's fascinating is during the Iran Contra hearings is when Representative Brooks tried to bring this up, and he was silent, right. bipartisan yeah. silent. Right. I mean, everyone said, "Oh, you know, we don't talk about these things, you know, because it's it's too important to keep this quiet." Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman, I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area, so may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in, in which he had worked. I believe may that it was. I, I most, I to get may I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. 
They yeah. immediately suppress it, yeah. and they say, this is something we can't discuss in the open.